Carnation Evaporated Milk presents the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show. I'm not what you'd call a handyman around the house. Now, last week, I had a little trouble with our refrigerator. I worked for two days trying to get it to run. I tried everything I could think of. But I finally had to give up and send for Joe, the repairman. He plugged it in, and it ran fine. <laughs> we, uh, we both had a big laugh over it, and uh, Joe finally gave me his bill, and I found out what he was laughing about. <laughs> You see, these fellas have a thing that they call portal-to-portal -portal pay. They get paid from the time they leave home. <laughs> Joe must have left home when he was 14. <laughs> so to save a little money, I went out and bought myself a special set of tools. It's supposed to make home repairs a cinch. Beautiful tool. Come in a mahogany box, oh, about this size. After about two days, I had to send for Joe again. <laughs> Couldn't get the box open. <laughs> uh, yeah, just had a lot of trouble, and then finally, after Joe left, I fooled around with the tools until I finally fixed something. I fixed the pipe under the sink so that it leaked. <laughs> but this time, I didn't send for Joe. Brought in a plumber, but they don't come alone. They bring along a straight man. <laughs> This fella carries the tools, lights the blowtorch, and times the laugh when the plumber hands you the bill. <laughs> and to fix this pipe, they had to chip out a piece of the wall. But they don't fix the wall. They're not allowed to do that. For this, I had to bring in a whole new act. The Michelson Brothers plasterers. <laughs> Their billing should have been 15 minutes of wet cement and fancy splatter. <laughs> and before they start, they cover everything with a big canvas. This is called a drop cloth. The reason they call it that, it has several holes in it. And the trick is to drop the wet cement through the holes onto the furniture. <laughs> These fellas were out of it. They must have trained with a Norden bombsite. And when they left, they told me to get a painter to touch up the little patches. That's when I quit. Went to a hardware store, got some paint, a brush, and a pair of white overalls. Painted it, and it looks great. Had to call Joe again. Couldn't get out of my overalls. <laughs> so you see, I'm not what... Oh, there's Jason. your laundry list after your laundry comes back? Oh, sure. It's the only way. I've been doing it for years, and I've never lost a thing. Oh, <laughs> uh, say, Gracie, I saw some coffee when I came in. May I please have a cup? Mm -hmm. Bring me a cup, too, will you? Okay. All right. Oh, by the way, you know that picture you gave me of you? Yeah. I had it framed. Oh, did you like it, Blanche? Oh, I love it. It looks just like you. Oh, flatterer. <laughs> yeah. Well, here you are, honey. Oh, thank you. What are you doing this afternoon? Oh, the Vandalips are out of town, and their young daughter, Emily, is coming over here to spend the weekend. Oh, isn't that nice? Emily's such a sweet girl. Yes, and she's so bright. I know. You know, her mother said to make sure that she does her homework, but she doesn't have to worry about that, girl. Oh, 
She's as smart as a whip. She's only 17 and she's already five foot three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, you see that she studies, huh, Grace? Oh, I will. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, Blanche, I'll let you in on a little secret. Hmm? Always use carnation evaporated milk in your coffee. Men love it. <laughs> Is that the way you hold yours? No, that's the way I hold a cup of whole jugs like this. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, one pair of wool socks. And... Gracie, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> this is a pair of socks? <laughs> George bought them. Yeah, but they're not me. I know, but he must like them. He's got another pair just like these. <laughs> Why don't you take the other sock like this and the one like this and pair them up? Uh-huh. Wouldn't that be a good joke on George? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <No. laughs> well, uh, getting back to Emily, how are you going to entertain her while she's here? Well, we'll do some of the things we did when I was a girl. Oh? My sister and I used to play dominoes and backgammon, and then my Uncle Harvey come over and he'd say, well, if we can find a fifth, we can play bridge. Uh, don't you mean a four? No, the stuff he liked only came in fifth. <laughs> Say, Gracie, I was just noticing uh, mm -hmm. all the buttons are gone on this shirt of George's. Oh, dear. And I haven't got any more buttons. Oh, I know. I'll sew up the buttonholes and you'll never know the difference. <laughs> Yeah, well, I'll be running along. I... Oh, say, listen, if Emily has a date tonight, why don't you and George go to the movies with us? Oh, no, no. If she's got a date, George and I'll have to chaperone them. Oh, Gracie, don't be silly. A 17-year-old girl doesn't need a chaperone. Why, when I was 17, I used to date all the time. We used to get in the car and we'd... <laughs> Harry and I'll be over and help you, huh? <laughs> This ought to be an interesting weekend. A 17-year-old girl spending three days with Gracie. It's a nice age, 17. You know, if I had one wish, I'd like to go back to the day I graduated from high school. That's a nice age, too, 25. <laughs> I used to go dancing oh, with my right, teacher. Right. If you insist on hanging Gracie's picture, show me where you want it. Sounds like Harry Morton is home. I don't rush me, Harry. I want to find just the right place for it. Oh, boy. Please, no. <laughs> Isn't that Gracie a doll? I love the way those eyes twinkle. Yeah. Well, naturally they twinkle. There's room for plenty of light to get in behind them. <laughs> enough of that, Harry. You know that she backed her car right through my tulip bed yesterday? Well, don't get excited. I told her she'd ruin some of your bulbs. You have your precious tulip. She bought you a whole sack of new ones. You know, Gracie can do some things right. She's not as dumb... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we could hang the picture right there. Okay. And don't hit your thumb. Oh, I won't. You think I'm a child? Oh, gee, by the way, the vandalists are going out of town. Oh, yeah, so I heard. And who do you think they're leaving their daughter with? Who? Gracie. Oh! Oh, Harry. Now look what you've done. All the frame is cracked. Good. Now it matches her. <laughs> and if the vandalists leave their only child with her, then they are too. Oh, hell. Why, you could find a better mother blindfold. You leave my mother out of this. Blanche, I was. <gasps> That's right. Hit me, you hammer murderer. Collect my $20,000 insurance. Blanche, you're getting hysterical. Besides, you're only insured for $5,000. Oh, no. I raised it to twenty. You did? <laughs> Harry? Oh, I'm only kidding. Oh! Break it up. They can hear you people a block away. Now come on. Get together. 
Make up and kiss. Kiss him? I wouldn't kiss him with a set of borrowed lips. <laughs> well, borrow some anyway. And while you're about it, get the rest of the equipment. Why? Oh! <laughs> Look, you, 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 you can't have everything. So Harry hasn't got much sex appeal. So Blanche isn't as attractive as she used to be. Is that any reason to Who carry on? Harry that? hasn't people, got sex people, appeal. What do you mean people. Blanche isn't attractive? Well, I, I, I didn't. I, I didn't. happen to think that Harry's one of the most I wouldn't trade Blanche for any woman in the world. She, 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 what are you trying to do? I demand that you apologize to Blanche for the ungentlemanly thing you said about it. You want to sign an idea? Just stop it. Don't come around here and do it. Where were we? Um. Oh, yeah. Don't you dare hit me with that hammer! Who's hitting you with the hammer? Happen to have the hammer in my hand when I... Ah, there you go again! I saw you with a mother! Well, go home to your mother! <laughs> you know, universal military training is a great idea. <laughs> it prepares a kid for marriage. You know, the Mortons weren't very happy about doing that last scene. At rehearsal, they said, if we fight like that, people won't like us. So I promised them a happy ending. Mortons, the happy ending. Bless. Harry. <laughs> Well, now everybody loves them and nobody believes they're married. <laughs> I must tell you a little story about the Mortons. Thanks for the message. I'll see you tonight. Okay, Emily. Oh, that's Emily Vandalet. <laughs> hey, that kid drives one of those hopped up cars. I found out why they call him that. If they miss you on the street, they hop up on the sidewalk and get you. Hello, Mrs. Burns. Well, Emily Vandalet, of all people, what a wonderful surprise. Oh, weren't you expecting me? Oh, sure, I just said that to make you feel welcome. Come on in. <laughs> Mother, is my clothes over? Oh, yes, I put them in your room. Well, now, Emily, let me see. Let me have a look at you. Oh, my, how you've grown. You know, the last time I saw you, I was only that <laughs> God, you got a lovely place here. Oh, thank you. Now, Emily, I want you to make yourself at home and do anything you like. Now, um, look, if, if you want to smell some flowers, here's some flowers. And there's a window if you'd like to look out. Or if you'd like to make a fire, there's a fireplace. Or, um, oh, I know, there's the phone. Go ahead and call somebody. Go ahead. Here, call somebody. Well, thanks a lot, but I believe I'll just get busy on my homework. Oh? Well, I've got some lemonade in the kitchen. Would you like some? Oh, I'd love it. All right. Uh, my, that's a pretty pin. Where did you get it? Well, that's my sorority pin from Gamma Gamma Sig. Oh, my, what a funny name. Is he nice? <laughs> well, Mrs. Burns, Gamma Gamma Sig is Greek. Well, even if he is, why don't you pick a simple name like Brown or Jones? <laughs> Well, I'm afraid you don't understand sororities. You see, I'm pledged to Gamma Gamma Sig. Oh, well, don't go through with it until you finish school. <laughs> Why, you're young, and you might even forget him. <laughs> <laughs> you see, you've forgotten him already. <laughs> I'll get the lemonade. Okay. <laughs> oh, is it okay if I have a date tonight? Uh, with that freak boy? Well, no, with Chuck. He's in my class at school. Oh, is he nice? Oh, gosh, yes. He's super. And smart, too. He's valedictorian. Emily, don't you know any nice American boys? <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Burns, what I meant to say Well, was... I guess it'll be all right if you do your lessons first. Oh, I will. I'll get busy on my math now. Oh, now, here's a nice pickup for you. Oh, thank you. Now, I've got to go to the market. What's that book you're reading? Oh, solid geometry. Oh, now, now, none of that. You get busy with your, with your lessons. <laughs> well, Mrs. Burns, that is a lesson. Oh, gosh, and what a lesson. 
I wish geometry were as easy as Spanish. Well, maybe I can help you. Say something to me in geometry. <laughs> Say something in geometry? Yeah, go ahead. Well, all right. Uh, a pi r square. Is that what they teach in school these days? Pi r square? Yeah. Emily, pi r round. <laughs> Cookies are round. <laughs> Crackers are square. <laughs> well, it's getting late. I better get busy. Well, I, I won't be long. I'll be right back. And you finish your lesson. I will. Oh, hello, Harry. Oh, hi, Gracie. What are you going to do with the hose water? No, I'm waiting for the house to catch fire. Well, I hope you don't have to wait too long. <laughs> hey, hi, Harry. Oh, hello, Bill. Say, what are you going to do with the hose, Harry? Water? <laughs> so a snail just tapped on my window and wanted a drink. <laughs> you know, this must be where George gets all his straight lines. <laughs> How are you, Bill? How are the cows down at Carnation? All oh, contented, thanks. How's Blanche? Is this a new subject? Oh. <laughs> Harry, I'm sorry. I didn't mean it the way it sounded. <laughs> Come in. Well, Emily Vanderlip. Oh, hi, Mr. Goodman. Hi, Emily. I just dropped over to show Gracie something. Oh, well, I'm afraid Mrs. Burns is gone. Yeah, isn't she, though? Real gone. <laughs> Where is she, though, Emily? Is she out here in the kitchen? Oh, no, or... I, I mean she went to the market. Oh, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll finish my homework so I can go out with Chuck tonight. Chuck? Who's he, your steady? Oh, gosh, yes. He's a dreamboat. Yeah? Hey, Emily, do you want to know how to make Chuck really like you? Well, he already likes me. Oh, no, I, I mean, really make him flip his lid over you, Emily. Look, I was just down at the Carnation Kitchen, see? And I can show you how to bake a strawberry shortcake that just won't quit. Okay. All right. Now, look, Emily. You just dig old Uncle Bill, see? Everybody knows that the best shortcake is made with carnation evaporated milk. Now, when you cook with carnation, Emily, you mix it half and half with water, you see? And then you have milk that's richer than any state standard for whole milk. See, it saves you a bundle that way. Gee, that's cool. Oh, the coolest, George. <laughs> now, Emily, all you need for shortcake, you see, is flour, baking powder, and uh, you need salt, butter, eggs, sugar, and, of course, carnation evaporated milk. Now, Emily, you just prepare all this, you see, and you put it in the oven and you bake it. All right? Now, while this is baking, Emily, I want to tell you about one more thing. Instead of whipped topping, or for your whipped topping, instead of whipping cream, you get carnation evaporated milk, and you take one cup of undiluted carnation, and you chill it in the icebox, then you squeeze in a little lemon juice, see, and you, and you whip it. Because carnation, just as it pours from the can, Emily, can be whipped just like cream, see? Now, you take a little sugar, and you put it in the, in the whipped carnation. Then you take the whipped carnation, and you spread it all over the cake, see? Mm. I bet it's done now. Wait till I show you this. Well, how about that? Oh, Mr. Isn't that Well, Mac, it's just the greatest shortcake you ever saw, huh? Listen, Emily, you take this and give it to Chuck and tell him you baked it, huh? Oh, but wouldn't that be dishonest? Wouldn't that be getting a man by trickery? Mm, well, yes. Swell, let's have it. <laughs> Gee, they weren't young nowadays. <laughs> Mr. Goodwin, you're a swell guy. You understand how young people feel. Well, naturally. I bet you were quite a fellow in your day. <laughs> in my day? Well, yeah, so many old creeps forget that they were young ones themselves. <laughs> old creeps? Oh, uh, oh, I mean, well, you're a nice old creep. I mean, well, thanks a lot. I'll put the cake in the kitchen. Goodbye, Mr. Goodwin. Goodbye, Emily. <laughs> Oh, it was so light when I came in. <laughs> A 
It's funny, but age is comparative. When I'm around Danny Kay, I feel old. When I'm around Milton Burl, I feel old. When I hear some of his jokes, I don't feel so old. <laughs> when I'm with Tony Martin, I feel old. That's why I love to pal around with Jack Benny. <laughs> he loves to pal around with Eddie Cantor. But this has got me worried. Cantor loves to pal around with me. <laughs> well, back to the show. It's now after dinner and it's four hours later. Now, let's make it two hours later. I'm getting old too fast. John, are uh, you in the living room? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Gracie? Yeah? Where's Emily? Oh, she's getting dressed for her date with Chuck. Oh, is Chuck nice? Oh, yes, I hope he is. Good, good, good. You know I like Emily. You do, huh? Mm-hmm. We have so much in common. You have? Yes. When I was her age, I was 17, too. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, that's quite a coincidence. Yes. Oh, you should have known me then, George. You know, I didn't know whether to be a, a doctor or a lawyer or a scientist or a great musician. Imagine having all that undeveloped talent. And you've still got it. Oh, it's sad. Oh, but before I could make up my mind, you came along and we got married. I really stopped a great career there. Oh, and I'd do it again. I'd much rather be your wife than amount to anything. <laughs> well, thank you, I think. Uh, look, Gracie, you better throw this. My, uh, my fingers are sticking out. Well, they won't if you wear it on your foot. <laughs> well, I, I never thought of that. Say, Emily, do you need anything? Well, no, thanks. I'll be dressed in a few minutes. Well, hurry up. I'm dying to see how you look. Oh, that's a wonderful age. You know, when I had my first date, my oldest brother, Jim, didn't approve of this boy. Did you so... say Jim? Oh, you didn't know Jim, did you? I didn't know you had a brother, Jim. Oh, that's right. You see, when you were courting me, he was gone. He ran away from home when he was 39. <laughs> I'll bet it upset your folks when they found out the kid was missing. <laughs> been upset, but they didn't know he was missing for three years. How did they find out? Well, you see, every morning my mother used to bring him up a plate of oatmeal. And after three years, she looked in his room and it was full of oatmeal. So she said to herself, well, the poor kid must be sick. He's not eating. That's how she found out he was missing? Yes. Did she send for the police? No, she ate those meal herself. <laughs> and, uh, and your brother Jim never returned home? No. Well, come to find out, he didn't exactly run away. Oh? What actually happened was, he sent his shirt to the laundry, and he only had one shirt, said he had to go along with it. He went along in the shirt? Yes. And he never came back? No. Oh, my mother felt awful. Well, I should hope so. Sure, they lost one of the dish towels, too. <laughs> one of the dish towels were missing, too. Yes. Oh, well, I can't believe my eyes. Uh, get a load of this. Oh. Uh, sit down, Chuck, and we'll be ready in a minute. Will he, will he take you out dressed like that? Yes. Come in. It's me, Emily. Oh, wait a minute. He's through. Is he well, really? Get a load of Hi, him. Emily. Boy, you look smooth. <laughs> oh, Chuck, I want you to meet Mr. and Mrs. Burns. Hello, Chuck. Oh, uh, how do you do, Chuck? Hi. Yeah, Hi. Hi. <laughs> Would you folks like to go dancing with us tonight? I'm sorry, but my Levi's are being pressed. <laughs> well, it, it might be fun. What kind of dancing do you do? We'll show you. Have you got a jump record? Yeah, oh, oh yes, I have. I've lost one. Yeah, hurry, 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 Thank you. 
Gretchen will be back in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Meanwhile, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you. Now watch this. I'm going to show you the perfect thing to go along with that strawberry shortcake. Just watch. A little carnation in the cream pitcher. Coffee and carnation evaporated milk. Boy, it smells good, too. And let me tell you why. You see, carnation, just as it pours from the can, has the consistency of cream. It's heavy enough to whip. And there's cream in every drop. No wonder millions of coffee lovers like carnation better than cream in their coffee. Yet carnation costs less than half as much as cream. Coffee and carnation. Oh, uh, by the way, in case you wondered why I prepared two cups, they're for Carnation's own contented couple, George and Gracie. Thank you very much. Uh, Gracie and I will be back in two weeks from tonight. Oh, this is delicious. Isn't Let me see. Mm. Yes, it is good. Oh, that's that jitterbug, you know. It's very refreshing, isn't yes, it? Yes, that is. Haven't danced like that in years. I you know. know, you know, Gracie, you and I ought to go dancing twice every week. All it's right. That kind, of, kind of keeps you young. I know. Well, tomorrow morning, the first thing I'll go down to the May, May Company and get a pair of those blue pants like her. Oh. You mean jeans? No, like Emily. <laughs> Emily. I, uh, I meant Levi's. No, like Emily's. Like Emily's. <laughs> So Jean Mahoney played Emily, and Bill Foster was her boyfriend, Chuck. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show will be back again in two weeks. Stay tuned now for Robert Q. Lewis, and the show goes on over most of these same stations. This is Bill Goodwin saying good night for Carnation. <laughs> Broadcasting system. Thank you, Willie.